Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight. Opposition leader Philip Brave Davis responds to that police reservist audit. The family of a man who allegedly killed himself expressing shock at the incident. The Zonta Club of New Providence seeks to impact the lives of children with a painted glass. Welcome to Our News and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Topping news tonight, parliamentarians passed a bill to amend the Immigration Act that would provide for new visas for foreigners here in the Bahamas. But that vote didn't go down without an awkward exchange between the Prime Minister and one Free National Movement member of Parliament. Frederick McAlpine. Stay. I can hear. I can hear. Stay. <laughs> you with menace? You with yeah. menace? Heinrich MP Frederick McElpine, who abstained from voting on amendments to the Immigration Act, got into a little back and forth with Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis. Changes to the act make way for the implementation of a BH-1B visa and BH-4S work permit, which is specifically designed for employees of tech companies. But not everyone was in favor of it. Looking at the vote, 19 MPs voted in favor, one voted against, and 17 were absent. Cameras caught Golden Isles MP Vaughn Miller leaving the lower chamber during the vote, which goes against Rule 61-8 of the House of Assembly, which says a member shall not leave the chamber during a division. It has been requested and is now ordered that a division of the House be taken. Miller returned after the vote and was marked absent. Meanwhile, Centerville MP Reese Chipman walked out just before the vote began, then returned shortly after. Therefore, he was also marked absent. One MP abstained from voting. Frederick McElpine, and here's why. I'm just not comfortable with thousands of persons coming into the country. I'm not anti-globalization, as I stated earlier, but you can't have globalization at the expense of bohemianization. Bohemians must feel comfortable. Like I said, we're becoming an endangered species. Same like everybody else is coming to the Bahamas and can make it. This seems to be one of the only places you could come here broke man and leave a multi-millionaire. McElpine says he sees what the government is trying to achieve by amending the Immigration Act, particularly when it comes to employment, but he's not comfortable with that. We also asked the Pine Ridge MP what caused that heated moment with ministering the vote. Well, he didn't mince words. Uh, well, I don't know if the PM was being facetious or just trying to have a gotcha moment with Pine Ridge. But Pine Ridge is a man that trusts in God, and I fear no man but God. So if he didn't hear me, I would gladly stiffen myself and strengthen my voice and make sure that he heard me and did it with fervor and respect. Opposition leader Philip Davis is weighing in on a recently released audit into the reserves branch of the Royal Bahamas Police Force that revealed that the program was not operating in an optimal manner. Davis telling the press today that the audit is troubling and makes it appear that the reservist branch is a dumping ground for retired officers. With more on this, here's Jasmine Brown. Davis was candid in his comments as he categorically denied that the PLP was playing politics with the police force. However, he did admit that it appears something went wrong with the reservist branch. The one thing that has come out of the report that, um, that has some merit is the fact that it appeared that the reservist regime seemed to have become the dumping ground for retired police officers. Minister of National Security Marvin Dames tabled the audit in Parliament on Wednesday. The audit, which outlined five main issues that were detrimental to the overall success of the branch, was initiated after the completion of a manpower audit on the traditional sector of the force. The report revealed that of the 1,255 reserves identified, approximately 786, or 61.2 percent, were active, and 487, or 38.8 percent, were inactive and had not reported to duty in over a year. That is something that is troubling to me. The audit also pointed to the poor management of the entire reserves program due to the lack of adequate supervision and management, as well as the fact that the branch did not have appropriate language 
language and policies that allowed for clearly defined expectations for the performance of enlisted personnel. In June 2012, the Christie administration confirmed plans to rehire senior police officers to help in the fight against crime. Former officer Stephen Seymour was returned to the force and was promoted to assistant commissioner and headed the reservists. Davis, who served as deputy prime minister in the Christie administration, was asked about claims that the PLP compounded the problem during its last term in office. We were not playing politics with the police force. I think the evidence speaks to that. Right? If politics is being played, it's being played right now because of the way they're treating the police officers. Are they reading how they are, how they are, how they are decimating the police force without any sort of rhyme or reason? Um, and um, we, I did, we denied vehemently. Um, and again, you have to stop the blame game. Davis suggested the next step should be for officials to take a good look at the reserves program to determine how it can function more effectively. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. All right, thanks, Jasmine. Well, police are investigating the alleged suicide of a 53-year-old Haitian man. Relatives say the father of five had a lot going for himself, but there were recent signs that something just wasn't right. Jared Higgs has more. According to police, it was shortly after 4 p.m. on Wednesday when they were called to this home on Haven Street in Rock Crusher, where they say the body of a man was found hanging in a closet. Family members tell our news that the victim is 53-year-old John Mark Lusant, a Haitian national and father of five children. It is very hateful because, you know, he's a cool body man, you know. Lusant's brother, Eve Joseph, says the man's wife found him hanging from a beam in a closet after realizing he was home at an unusually early hour. She went, she went back inside again and I'll check on the closet. You know, she find him hanging himself on down with, with, with a rope. Joseph says three of his brother's children live in the Dominican Republic, one lives in the United States, and his 14-year-old son lived with him. He expressed confusion at his brother's decision, saying Lusant was able to support his family with his job as a landscaper on Paradise Island. Things were going so well, according to Joseph, that his brother recently purchased a new SUV. However, the 48-year-old admits that his older brother was demonstrating some abnormal behavior. A little while he was talking, talking to his, to his mind, you know what I'm saying? But we are really know that uh, his mind is going to confuse a little bit. Joseph says there were other signs too. The wife asked him, why do you have to work in the car? So he said like, no, leave the work there because he needed it. Just like he, he know what he was going to do, you understand? Lusant reportedly moved to the Bahamas 30 years ago. That's where he struck up a friendship with his neighbor, Mike Knowles. And he never showed no signs. He bought his wife here. He bought his son here. He goes to church every Sunday, take the boy to church, cut his hair. Good man. Just bought a car, tile out his house, paint out his house. Knowles described the Haitian national as a solid member of the community, saying the two would often lend each other money. We need to talk more. We need to interact with one another more, you know, and, you know, find out, you know, how each other is doing and feeling, you know, because... If he, if, if someone had said something to me or he had showed me some sign, I sure, I'm sure I could have helped him in some way. Lusant's alleged suicide was the fourth for 2019. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. The Minister of Finance says the government does not have money to give away. This as the South Andrews MP called for the government to put something in the pockets of Bahamians. Georgia Bain reports. There was a heated back and forth between Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist and Mangrove Key and South Andros MP Picewell Forbes during Turnquist's contribution to the Securities Industry Amendment Bill 2019. Forbes called the government to put money in the pockets of Bahamians, especially those working hard every day but who are still struggling. Well, Finance Minister called those comments irresponsible. The chairman for the, 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 opposite, the opposition is in Grand Bahama every weekend. I don't know why he's there every weekend, but he's there every weekend. <laughs> and he makes these statements, throw money on the ground. The government needs to throw money on the ground. Yeah. Well, I wonder, how much money does he have? When it, when that he can throw money on the ground. I know the government of the Bahamas doesn't have that much money. That he can throw, the people's money. That he can throw on the ground. That's, that's, that is what has gotten us into the financial problems that we have today. Forbes then rose on a point of order to defend what he meant, stating that he will not allow for Turnquest to twist his words. 
and we talk about the foreign reserves and what's happening with level of liquidity in our society, Bahamian people are not feeling it. And all I'm simply saying, in the everyday vernacular, people are saying we got to put something on the ground. They, they call it trickle-down economics. I'm saying in my kind of way, I'm saying put money on the ground. Let people feel the money that is in our society. That's what I'm saying. He can't change that. He, can't, he cannot speak for me as a member for East Grand Bahama. Turnquay said Forbes failed on his attempt to clear up what he meant and remained steadfast that the government simply does not have free money to give away. The government of the Bahamas is the, the, the guardian and custodian of the Bahamian people's money. We have no, no right to put money in people's pockets. We have no right. It, it, is, it is irresponsible. Now, what we do have an obligation to, and his wider point, and I, and I take his wider point, because I'm sure this is what he meant, right? which is to, to develop policies, develop programs that empowers Bahamians Back in February, Turnquest revealed in Parliament that the government's revenue projection for 2018-2019 fiscal period fell short by $189 million due to a renegotiated tax structure for gaming houses, lower than expected VAT collections, and a delay in establishing a revenue enhancement unit. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgie O'Bain. All right, thanks, Giorgio. Still to come, teen girls urged to expand their horizons, plus how Zonta Club is helping to shape young lives. Stay tuned.